Let's talk about the inguinal canal. So the inguinal canal runs from the anterior superior, well, okay, the inguinal ligament first. Let's talk about the inguinal ligament. The inguinal ligament runs from the anterior superior iliac spine all the way down to the pubic tubercle. And along the superior iliac spine, down to the pubic tubercle, between the, there are two rings. Basically, this is the anterior superior iliac spine, this is the pubic tubercle, this would be called the inguinal ligament. So this is our inguinal ligament. Now, above the inguinal ligament, this would be the midpoint of inguinal ligament. It's just the midpoint between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle. Now, in terms of the inguinal canal itself, so the canal will run only from this ring and this ring. So the canal runs from the superficial ring and the deep ring. Now, as this runs along, the inguinal canal is important for a number of clinical um, clinical associations, and it actually runs in an oblique direction, as you can see this way, from the pubic tubercle to the anterior superior iliac spine. This oblique direction is very important in terms of expansion, because the inguinal canal, the purpose of it is to allow passage, allow a passageway, passageway for the abdominal contents. And this is different in men and different in women. So let's talk about what it is in men, what passes through the inguinal canal in men and what passes through the inguinal canal in women. In men, it is the spermatic cord which aids in ejaculation, spermatic cord. In men, it's also the, um, so there's also an ileo, and in women, it's the, sorry, round ligament of the uterus. And in both, there's a sensory nerve known as the ilioinguinal nerve. And then there's also the genital branch of, I think it's the femoral nerve. And the genital branch of the, again, genital branch here as well. Okay. Now let's have a look at the borders of the inguinal canal because this is a question you are most definitely going to be asked. So the way to remember this is to remember M, sorry, M A L T. M stands for muscle and it's going to be our internal oblique muscle. A stands for aponeurosis. And because this was internal oblique muscle, this is going to be external oblique aponeurosis. L stands for ligament, and this is going to be obviously none other than the inguinal ligament. And T stands for transversalis fascia, which is the deepest fascia found in the abdominal region. Which one's going to be superior, which one's... Okay, let me explain to you. So the superior one is going to be the muscle of the external oblique. So here, superiorly, is going to be muscle of the internal oblique. Then because A is for aponeurosis, A is also for anterior. Anteriorly, you're going to have the aponeurosis of external oblique. Then you just have inferior and posterior left. So inferiorly, I, inguinal ligament, has two eyes, doesn't it? So inferiorly, you're going to have inferiorly you're going to have inguinal ligament and finally posteriorly which is underneath you're going to have the transversalis fascia